Welcome to the Somewhere In Between podcast. This is a dedicated space for you to feel empowered, inspired, and a little less alone in those messy life moments in between. I'm your host, Neha O'Rourke. I'm a former burnt out ad gal turned into an award-winning career and energy coach and founder of Summer In Between Coaching. Part of my purpose and what I'm truly obsessed with is helping you tap into a more authentic, limitless, and joy-filled life that honors your true self. It's my absolute honor to be by your side, supporting you in your journey somewhere in between. This is the Summer In Between Podcast. Welcome back to the Somewhere In Between Podcast. You guys, I have to be honest, and I'm a little nervous for this episode. It's one of those things that has been on my heart for pretty much my whole life. And a lot of my own fears, fear of judgment, fear of how I might be perceived, just a million fears that have historically stopped me from sharing this subject. And the more and more that I see just destruction and war and pain and hurt into this world, the more and more I am called to overcome that fear and to start sharing this message because it's one that is so, so important to me. So today's message is about how do we start to unite as humanity? How do we start to really embody what we truly are, which is love? And before I get into this episode, I just want to share a little bit of background on why this is so meaningful to me. So first of all, my name actually means love. And love is a concept of something that I have resonated with my whole life. Like, what does it mean to be love? What does it mean to give love? And It's also been a part of my upbringing. I am really, really passionate about bringing humanity together. And I can thank a lot of my upbringing for that. I am a first generation Indian American who straddled two different cultures. I was never Indian enough for the Indian community, and I was never American enough for the American community. And so here I stood somewhere in between trying to figure out where do I fit in in all of this. And what was so interesting as growing up in this dual culture environment is that I found myself as a bit of a platypus. If you've listened to previous episodes, you'll know that my spirit animal is a platypus because I just feel like a big old hodgepodge of everything in between. And it's that multicultural aspect of me that has allowed me to see different cultures as something filled with love and has given me a really unique perspective when it comes to differing opinions, differing cultures. Not only was I a first generation Indian American, but my parents actually came from two completely different cultures within India. You know, a lot of times we can just group culture based on where you're from, but there are so many subcultures, right? If you think about someone from the deep south versus someone maybe from the east coast, They all are American, but you might find some different beliefs, cultural insights, ways of being. And so similar to that, my parents came from completely different worlds within India. And so even within my own household, there were always these opposing viewpoints, differences, and even like contrast. And to even further that, I grew up in a multi-religious home. I had one parent that was Hindu. I had another parent that was exploring their religion, and which meant that I got to experience what it was to be Hindu, what it meant to be a Sai Baba devotee, what it meant to be non-denominational Christian. I have worshipped in an all-black church, like just so many different cultural experiences. And what all of these things have given me is this viewpoint of non-judgment. This viewpoint of seeing the beauty in all of these different religions and cultures and different aspects of how we show up in this world. And it's been something that I'm really called to. As you'll also see, my name is Neha O'Rourke, which is, again, another multicultural aspect of me. I am obviously Indian American. I'm married 
to an Irish Italian American man. And so even within our marriage, there are multicultural aspects. It's it's one of the things I'm most proud of. I feel my marriage is an embodiment of what I truly believe in, which is human beings are human beings. And when we love one another for who we are and celebrate our differences, that is really where the magic lies. And as I look at the world around me, where we can be so divided politically, culturally, religiously, and in so many other facets, I feel really called to remind us of who we truly are, truly with a capital T, who are we truly at our core essence. And when you think about it, we're all just energy of love. Before you subscribe to a religion, before you were plopped somewhere on this earth before you grew up in a certain area, before you adopted certain beliefs. You were just pure consciousness, pure love energy. And that is who we truly are. I want to bring up the idea of consciousness. What even does that mean? And at the broadest sense, consciousness is the awareness of who you really are, as opposed to the you that you believe you are, or that you were taught that you are. And when it comes back down to it, we are just love. And so when I look at all of the the hardships and the horrible things that are happening in the world, often it's because we've forgotten who we truly are. And we have strayed away from the true essence, that love consciousness that we actually are. And while there's a million ways that we can help and take action in making change in our world, today I want to focus on who we are being and how we are being love. And I want you to take back to the affirmation, I am love. Just like my name means love, I am love, you are love. So asking yourself, what would love do? How would love show up? And how can I start to embody love? The great Dr. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And so in this time where we are seeing so much hatred, so much darkness, it is our opportunity. It is our responsibility to remember who we truly are and to show up to life as in love. And As fluffy as that can sound, it is the truth of who we are. And when we think about this, as we start to show up in love, that starts to ripple on our collective consciousness. Because again, we are all intertwined with one another. There's a theory of quantum entanglement in quantum physics that will show you how you are connected to everyone that you come into contact with. And there's real science to show how we are all connected as one. And if that doesn't resonate with you, at the most basic kindergarten level, we are all humankind. We are all one kind. And to start creating change, to start to uplift our kind, it starts with embodying love. And when we look at what it means to be love, it really is about accepting one another for who we truly are. And so I challenge you to even think about people who you may have completely different viewpoints with, completely different color, completely different beliefs, and with the lens of non-judgment, with the lens of curiosity, making an effort to understand where the other person is coming from, to celebrate our differences. Gosh, how boring. How freaking boring would our world be if we were all just clones of one another? There is a reason that we are different. There is a reason that the tapestry of humanity looks different, sounds different, believes in different things, because it brings so much richness to humanity, to the human experience, we all have something to offer. And so coming to conversations with this idea of non-judgment, with the 
intention to understand and to learn and to love. And on top of that, also trying to see how are we the same. At the end of the day, we all feel pain. We all feel hurt. We have all experienced some sort of sadness or anger. And we've all known at the smallest level, what does it mean to be loved? We all yearn for well-being and happiness and connection, health. There are so many things that when you look at a different culture or a different religion, someone with a completely different viewpoint on life than you, if you seek to find ways that you are the same, I promise you, you will find them. And so it is my kind of rally cry to you to remember who you truly are and to remember that we are all brothers and sisters of one another. We are all soul family. We are all connected. And I, like I've talked in previous episodes, really looking inwards because psychology and human behavior, like I've previously shared, will tell you that when we are judging someone else, It is actually us judging ourselves. When we are looking at someone and saying that this is wrong or right, that is something that we have not accepted within ourselves. And so if someone triggers you, if someone's beliefs, someone's way of being, whatever it is, if something triggers you, I challenge you to look within yourself and ask yourself, what unhealed part of me right now is asking for my attention, is asking for my love. And in this cry to embody love and to be love, it is not only showing love to others, but is showing love to yourself. And collectively, as we start to see and show and be more love, We start to heal this planet. We start to heal our kind. Because when you think about things like war, things like hatred, they all come from somewhere. And where does that stem from? It stems from a thought. When you think about even the most vile, disgusting wars that have happened, things like the Holocaust, where did that begin? That began in someone's mind. And that mind and that thought spread through others, through us compromising or forgetting who we truly are, forgetting our inherent power within. And so it all comes back to the root of all of this, which is our thoughts, which is who we are being, which is standing in the power of the truth of who we are all, which is love. So just be love embody love. And every day, I want you to ask yourself, how can I be love? What would love do? How can I share love? It is my mission in this podcast and the work that I do to remind you of who you truly are. And I am so grateful that you tuned into this episode. Something in you had you listen to this episode. And I have no doubt that you embodying love is going to make such a ripple in this world. And so I thank you for being with me on this mission of reminding us of who we truly are, of raising the consciousness of this planet, for celebrating the beauty of humankind. Because I know that I deserve better. I know you deserve better. I know the next generation deserves better. Our planet deserves better. We all deserve better. And we are capable of better. We are capable of more. We just have to remember who we truly are. So I thank you for listening to this episode. I am love. You are love. Go embody love. And if this episode resonated with you, my intention is that you do with it what feels most in alignment with you. If that's sharing it with someone and spreading this word, do that. If it's sharing 
with how you are showing up in love in the smallest little ways in your everyday. Share it. If it is just simply embodying what it means to be love, that in itself is profound. And if you feel so called, I would be so grateful if you not only subscribe, but you took the two minutes it takes to just rate this podcast five stars if you felt inclined and to just share a couple words as to what's resonating with you on Apple Podcasts. That would mean so much to me for if you could share your love in that way, because it really is my mission to spread this word to more people and to raise our collective consciousness and to help us all remember who we are. And I can't do that by myself. I am surrendering to the fact that I need your help. So in your reviews and your ratings and your sharing of the show, you really help me in that mission. And I'm so excited to be a bright spot in history together. I truly thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of this mission, to being a part of this movement, and for being love for yourself and for others and for humanity. I have no doubt it will create massive ripples in our collective. So until the next episode, be love and be well, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.